Hey guys, Chad over Kayak Bass and TV, and this is my early fall wait. It's my late summer into early fall, honorable mention, favorite lures. <laughs> All right, so these are in no particular order, but they are all lures that are part of my arsenal when I'm fishing in the fall. I'm going to say that a buzz bait doesn't sit on this cooler because a buzz bait is a default. It kicks butt pretty much any time the water temperature is warm enough for bass to blow up on top. But I do have a spin on the buzz bait that's going to be introduced in that. So don't blow me up in the comments and tell me, dude, I can't believe you didn't put a buzz bait on because a buzz bait's a staple. Throw a buzz bait. It definitely works in the fall, but everybody else is telling you to throw a buzz bait. So I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, of a different approach and some of the things that you may or may not necessarily consider a fall bait. So what happens in the fall? The harvest happens in the fall. So if you live in an agricultural area and you're working your way into the back of creeks, especially as farmers start to cut the fields, what happens? They force mice rats into the woods so what happens is this is my favorite time of the year to throw a rat because it's the time of the year that it makes the most sense for there to be rats or rat looking things in the water now i'm a big fan of this spro rat in every size i really like it in the big size but a lot like we talked about with the whopper plopper we're talking about catching numbers we're talking about still catching quality fish so i've got a dozen or more of these rats in every size i love them uh, I love giving them to people to get them excited about it. And I love the look on somebody's face when I hand them a rod with, hold on just a second. When I hand them a rod with a, uh, hold on, wait, keep, keep watching. Um, I'll be back in just a second. Stay there. Stay right there. I love when I hand somebody a rod with one of these big dudes tied on and they look at me like I got a unicorn horn growing out of my forehead. Um, but that thing right there catches fish. I like it in the natural color like this one. I like it in black. Uh, and in fall, I really like it in that color. It gets a lot of attention. Uh, it elicits a lot of vicious strikes and it's flat deadly. So they're cutting fields. Farmers are cutting fields. So rats are vacating the fields. And a lot of times there's creeks that run the edge of these properties because a lot of agricultural property is built around pulling water from creeks for irrigation purposes. So if you live in an area where there's a creek and there is agricultural uh, anything near it, be, call the farmer, right? Find out when they plan cutting and be there when it happens because I promise you, it can be one of the most exciting times for fall fishing ever. It's actually the time of year when I learned that bass will actually eat rats. I was sitting in a creek, uh, I think I was throwing a Cinco or a, a Texas rig worm. This farmer was coming down the field, disking the field up where they were cutting the, they, were cutting the, they weren't um, harvesting, they were cutting, right? And so I guess there was still quite a few field mice and rats and stuff that had moved up into the field. But as soon as he came by, I saw three or four of them just start working their way across the creek. And I saw this little disturbance, kind of paddled up to it, thought it was a snake at first. And then realized, oh crap, that's little mice. They're swimming across the surface and then boop, 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 all three of them are gone. I was like, oh my goodness. As the farmer made another pass, another wave of little field mice and rats tried to make their way across the creek. And even something bigger than this that tried to swim across the creek just got devoured. And that's when I saw firsthand why a fish would eat a rat. That's when I saw firsthand why it's something that should be part of my arsenal. Now, I'm not saying the only time they'll eat it is during harvest time, but I'm saying during harvest time is a great time to be fishing something like this. I can tell you that I feel like bass, and especially in shallower creeks, they can feel the ground moving, right, from that big heavy farm equipment. And if they've been around for it happening before, I think they get fired up. I think it ignites that, oh yeah, it's about to happen. It's kind of like the Rocky theme playing. We all know what's about to happen, right? You know that the, the big Russian's been beating him in the ground, but when that music starts playing, you know he's about to come back, all right? So it fires those fish up. They go nuts, and I like to throw a rat. I like the smaller size when I'm trying to cover water if I'm fishing around tighter cover, but this medium size, a lot like the Whopper Plopper uh, in the 110 size is the best all around size that you should look into. But man, I'm gonna tell you, I was skeptical of this thing right here when it first came out. I was like, that thing looks like the Terminator or something. Why would I throw a rat in chrome? Well, here's why. Because at the same time, a lot of that stuff's happening the fish that are moving up the creek are silver. They're starting to get their blood closer to the skin. They'll get almost clear uh, and they just reflect really well. So 
I've had a lot of success with this rat last season. The year before that, I didn't fish it. I thought it was a little goofy. Uh, I talked to Bill, the guy that designed these BBZ rats, and he said, bro, you got to throw it. I started throwing it, and I actually lost one of these to a muskie that had half the paint knocked off of it um, because I was catching bass on it. And so in fall, when the farmers are harvesting and it's flushing those field mice across the creeks, be there, all right? Late evening, early morning, even in the middle of the day, when that combine comes by harvesting or when that plow comes by turning everything under those mice are going to work their, they're going to head to the woods and if there's not a big stint of woods between the edge of the field and the creek they're going to flood across that creek and it's going to be pandemonium so have a rat tied on but during that time of year they just expect it so throw a rat a rat is deadly effective same thing i was talking about with the popper steady reel it hold your rod tip up wait for that blow up that makes it wake a little shallower put your rod tip down get it down a little deeper but every now and then reel it speed up your reel pull it and give back and it'll make that rat turn sideways if you have a fish follow it like a muskie or a smallmouth and you can see them following it or if you've had a couple of follows reel that bait speed it up get to about 90 degrees and give back that way that bait turns sideways. It runs into its own wake, it turns sideways. It's a big meal. It's almost like if I pitched a softball to you and the sun was in your face, you're gonna go like that. Bass don't have hands. They've only got a mouth, so they're gonna open their mouth and try to eat or kill whatever it is that they think is coming back at them. So that's deadly effective. Now, I'd be crazy if I didn't talk about fishing a walk the dog style stick bait in fall, in early or late summer into early fall transition. So I'm not gonna talk about it other than to say, fish it. Tie a loop knot, learn how to walk the dog. The Sexy Dog Junior size or the Sexy Dog Full size are great baits. I like Rapala Skitter Walks, I like Bone Spooks, uh, I like Clear Spooks, two of my favorite all-time lures. But if you wanna learn an easy to, to walk lure, this Sexy Dog from Strike King does a great job. Uh, it's got the high pitch or the low pitch, it's just depending on which size you want, which type you want. And so the, the full size, the sexy shad, uh, the natural shad, both of those do really well for me. Um, when these get beat up, I simply scuff sand them with a piece of sandpaper, paint them flat black, and then I throw them in all the conditions that I talked about throwing the whopper plopper and the loon color in. So high skies, low skies, stained water, throw this in a black and you'll catch a lot of fish. Um, so again, I'm not gonna talk much more about that other than the fact that it should be part of your arsenal and it's definitely an honorable mention. I like it when I'm fishing slower. I like it when I'm staying over the top of something, uh, a sunken tree, a ledge, a drop off, a bend going into a creek mouth where the fish are starting to work their way in. And so a walk the dog style stick bait, a spook type bait is definitely something you should have in your arsenal. Now, swim baits. Let's talk about swim baits. I can go out at times and throw this thing from the time I get on the water till the time I get off. That is Mike Buka's bull shad. Uh, this thing has been beat up so bad and caught so many fish. I've had to touch up the paint job. I've had to repaint it. I've had to change the hooks. Uh, I'm about at the point where I need to doctor the tail up. That thing right there for those big fish that are looking for a big return on investment, three steps to a cheeseburger instead of you know running them out to eat a Cheeto, that thing is deadly effective. Something to keep in mind though, is a lot of times they are looking for something a little smaller, a little easier to digest. They wanna eat more, right? They don't necessarily wanna eat something big and then have to wait because they're trying to feed up. So a lot of times they will shy away from the bigger baits because they're tougher to digest. They take a little longer and these fish wanna get the maximum amount of nutrition and the maximum amount of nourishment for the lowest amount of energy expended for the greatest amount of return on investment. But sometimes they understand their bodies are in, instinctually, they know that they can eat more easy to digest mid-sized baits. And that's why I like the, the bull shad in the six inch size. It's one of my favorite ones to throw year round. That thing is deadly. So that bull shad in the eight inch, even in the nine, 10 and 11 inch, depending on the conditions I'm fishing. Uh, but the eight inch and the six inch are my two favorite. I really like them in the natural shad color. They do really well. I do have the, the uh, darker profiles for when the water's a little more stained. Uh, but these two right here get the job done for me about 95% of the time. And then these BBZ swim bait, they're basically a scaled down version of these. They're a little smaller, just a little, a little more natural, but I like these in super clear water. And then I like these in super shallow water. Uh, they just come through the water a little cleaner. They've got a little tighter wobble, a little tighter action. So if I'm fishing where there's a lot of brim, I go with the brim color. If I'm fishing where there's a lot of threadfin shad, I go with the threadfin shad color. 
I actually like to fish these with a little bit heavier fluorocarbon leader, 12 to 17 pound, you know, maybe even 20 pound line to where it stays up in the water column because the leader creates a little bit more lift. Um, and I like to disrupt schools with these baits. I like to throw them in there. I like to rip them through there. And as soon as I dis disrupt the, the shad school, I like to hold my rod tip up high and slow reel it, but low, allow, allow it to seek the bottom and then raise it back up and those things will elicit some deadly strikes. Now, these are, have a single hook on them. They don't have the double hook on them like the Buka Shad. And the reason for that is if they're overrunning the bait and I'm deep hooking them, I'll drop down to this bait. I, I do a lot of fishing with this lure right here. I give this bait to intermediate and beginning anglers a lot of times and they catch a lot of fish because it simply is a cast and retrieve style lure. So in the category, that I want to talk about for fall fishing and the honorable mention, swim baits. They're a staple, they're a given, but they don't always work, so they're not in my top five. They work when they work better than anything else out there. So keep one tied on, throw it as an exploratory, especially when you don't see a lot of surface action and you can get some big fish. This is a lure that really fits more into the fall into winter transition or when I'm fully into the fall pattern, not so much the late summer to early fall, but I really like to start throwing a lipless crankbait as soon as the water temperature starts to drop. Not when it even gets in a particular temperature range, but as soon as it starts to drop because I can cover a lot of water, it's a lot like a chatterbait. So if I'm around, if I'm in open water and I would throw a chatterbait, then I would probably throw this more so because it creates more vibration, more flash, and I'm gonna get a lot more uh, chase down style bites. I'm gonna get a lot more uh, bait that form up on this. One of the things that happens with a lipless crankbait is a lot of times the fish will form up on it and swim with it. That predatory fish takes off, the fish scatters, that bait's left and it gets eaten. So keep a lipless crankbait, especially these downsized, smaller versions when you're fishing the shad schools, working your way to the back of creeks, that thing is deadly. That little um, really small, the smallest one they make in the red eye shad is deadly effective. I like it with a little gold tinge to it so it sticks out amongst these wads of big bait. You're lottery fishing if it looks exactly like it because there's a million uh, pieces of bait in the water but that dark back and that gold side does really well for sticking out in that school and I catch a lot of fish on that. So I'm not going to say last but not least because these are definitely, you know, front runners but something that you should seriously consider uh, is a spinner bait i really like gray natural i keep it pretty simple for spinner baits in the fall i get a little bit more advanced uh, or a little bit more discriminating in the summertime but i like as heavy a spinner bait as i can get away with because i can raise my rod tip to make it run shallow i can lower my rod tip and fish it like a crankbait to get it to run deeper but i like these burner style from strike king i like to have the two willow blades on the burner. I like one silver, one gold, and I like a natural shad color. I'm always gonna fish these with a trailer hook. Uh, I keep trailer hooks in my PFD, and so that's something you should definitely consider. And then a little bit heavier, you know, with the trailer hook on it, uh, a little clearer skirt. This one's got uh, a little bit less dark on the top. A silver Colorado, I mean a silver willow leaf, and then a little Colorado kicker. What that does is allows me to fish a little slower. That blade's got a little more lift. I like to go with silver in my primary blade and gold in my secondary blade just because it stands out in the schools and the wads of bait. It works good for a number of varying conditions. As I'm working my way back a creek, if there's any runoff, I might go through, through clear water, stain water, clear water. And so, so I don't have to dig through my box a bunch. I like to go with a natural color, something chrome silver, you know, shad color, you know, whites and natural greens. Um, but something I really like to do with my spinner blade baits, spinner bait blades this time of year is I like to concave them a little bit and then I like to nick the edges up where it creates cavitation, where it creates bubbles, where it creates um, agitation in the water that's just gonna make that bait stand out a bit. So it's a super simple thing. Just take yourself some pliers and put little irregular bends in it. Uh, concave it a little bit so the wobble tightens up. You can fish this a lot faster than you normally would be able to. That Colorado kicker still gives it lift. So if you slow it down and you want it to fall, it's gonna have a natural presentation. So don't overlook a spinnerbait. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a spinnerbait. Now, one other thing that I'm gonna tell you, you have to fish, okay? And this, is, this falls into that category of a chatterbait, but I like this in more uh, dense grass. I like this around the edges of grass. I like this when I'm casting into deeper grass, if I'm finding the fish there, and that is a swim bait. But one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do with a uh, swim jig, I'm sorry, is you're gonna wanna put a shad trailer on it, right? Whether that's a sexy shad, whether that's the hardtail worm. Um, and I like to do the rebate thing, so hold on just a second, let me find one. 
and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Where the hell did I put them? All right, so one of my favorite swim jig trailers is a Sexy Shad. And what I normally do, is if you can see this one here, it's been torn up a little bit, is I normally save these after I've fished them as a primary um, swim bait, as a, as a hollow body swim bait. And then I like to just simply take my, my pocket knife and cut the nose off just a little bit, right? As, as close as I can and still preserve that hollow body solid nose. And then what I do is I rig this onto my swim jig by coming in high on the head, coming out through the bottom, and you're gonna work that lure up on the nose of that jig. You're gonna get the hook coming out the bottom and then you're gonna either side hook it like that or you're gonna go through the body like you would do with a standard um, hollow body swim bait. I really like to side hook it because it makes it swim crooked. It gives it a lot more wobble and kick. And then when the fish hits it, it pops off of there so much easier and that hook turns sideways and catches them in the corner of the mouth. So the way I like to fish my swim jig is I like to use a hollow body swim bait when I have them. If I don't, I'll use a standard Kytec or a, uh, a similar style solid saw plastic swim bait. I like to barely skin it in the side. That makes it run a little crooked, gives it some extra wobble, and that right there is a deadly combination. A swim jig is definitely one of those year-round arsenals, but if I'm fishing around docks, if I'm fishing around deeper wood, if I'm fishing around submerged grass, or if I'm fishing in current, I'm almost always gonna have a swim jig tied on. It's one of my favorite ways to fish. It's versatile, it catches a lot of fish, and you can try a, different, a number of different trailers. Now, earlier in my video series, I completely overlooked telling you about one of my favorite topwater frogs, but I'm gonna tell you about it now, all right? And so this is a toad style pattern. It's the Yamamoto Yama Frog. I fish this thing so much as a frog, but I fish it even more as a trailer. And the reason being is it's got a lot of crazy killer action and I can rig this thing sideways to give it a more broad profile or I can rig it vertical. So let me just show you how this thing looks rigged on a swim jig. Simply slide it up past that hook band, take that hook, come inside the body, pop it out so it lays on top, and then you get some just nasty, crazy action out of the tails, out of the feet. You throw that thing out and you let it fall through the water column and when it hits the bottom, those legs are just moving in the current. That thing right there is deadly nasty. So the Yama Frog is a great frog, right? It's a good frog, but it's an even better trailer. It works great for jigs. So just like all my other rebate concepts, I fish it primarily as a uh, frog first. Once the nose is torn up, I cut the tip off and then I use it as a trailer. This thing is deadly effective as a swim jig trailer. It works really great for a lot of other things, for chatterbait trailers and stuff, but I like it the most as a combination with my swim bait. These legs just come to life, so even if it's sitting dead still, this is also a great pitch bait for throwing it into beds and fishing vertical rock bluff walls like I'm going to be doing a lot of this fall on the Tennessee River system. So that lure right there is deadly effective for throwing up against bluff walls banging it, hopping it off, letting it swim down, and just kind of working it out away from those walls. Uh, it falls slow. If you put a big trailer on it, it falls fast. If you put no trailer or a small trailer on it, you, it's very versatile for fishing it through the complete um, top to bottom, all through the water column, and it just catches a lot of fish because pretty much anything shad this time of year is gonna catch fish. Now, I talked earlier about the fact that I wasn't gonna talk about a buzz bait, but I was gonna talk about a little bit of a buzz bait modification. So. When you're fishing, when you're fishing a swim jig, one of the best ways to take this thing to the next level is to simply use one of these clip-on. This is a Secret Weapon Lures version right here, uh, but there are a lot of different clip-on style buzz bait uh, uh, buzzers. You know, so you basically just have a buzz bait blade. If you can't find one of these, you can make it yourself. You can simply take the buzz blade, buzz bait clip it off, put a ring, uh, put a loop in it, put a ring on it, and then you can just clip this directly to your swim jigs. But with a swim jig, a standard jig, or even just putting the frog on there naked behind that, that right there is just nasty for fall fishing. It adds a little bit more weight to it, a little bit more bulk. It creates a more of a churn and more of a, a, a loud gurgle with the buzzbait blade. Um, and you can even swim it just below the surface like a wake bait and bass flat annihilated. So again, you can fish it with a swim jig to add a little weight. You can take the, 
Yama Frog and the straight hook and go directly to it. But a buzzbait clip-on addition to a swim jig is a deadly combination. It's something that you can get away with pulling double duty. You can put swim baits behind this. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You can simply put a frog behind it and it works really well. But these clip-on buzzbait blades, this one's from Secret Weapon. Like I said, there's a number of companies that make them or you can make your own. That thing right there is deadly effective. Now, last but again not least, a spoon is one of my favorite baits early in the spring and it's one of my favorite baits late in the spring. It's one of my favorite baits dead of winter, but it's also one of my favorite baits in this transition from summer into fall and here's why. I can throw it out and let it wobble slow and reel it and I steady reel it and I get a lot of bites. I can throw it out and let it hit the bottom and sit dead still with a teaser on it and I'll show you how to make one of those in a second and I catch a lot of fish. But a spoon is one of the most underrated, forgotten about, a lot like a popper, uh, a lot like tiny torpedoes and some of the other small baits out there that are great that have just kind of fallen out of favor. But a spoon should be in your, your fall arsenal. It just absolutely should be something you start throwing as soon as the days get shorter, and it's something you should throw all the way through. I like gold, I like black, and then I really like this copper color. If the water's got any stain to it, at all i'm going to fish the black or the gold if it's clear i'm going to fish the copper uh i very rarely, rarely fish the silver it just doesn't stick out enough for me it doesn't have contrast it probably works just great but i have a lot of success with black i have a lot of success with gold and let me show you a couple of things that i like to do first and foremost you can take a screw lock off of any of your frog style hooks you can pop it on the back and you can put a fluke junior or something like that on it and create a little trailer that gives it a little bit more realism. It gives something for those bait fish to swim behind and peck behind. Uh, and it just changes the action a little bit. It makes it a little bit more erratic, uh, but at the same time, a little bit more predictably erratic so you don't have as many misses. That being said, let me show you my favorite way to rig these things up. And that's to take a staple. You're probably not gonna be able to see this uh, as easily, but what you do is you just take a staple that's bent. You take it out of a package. It's already over the ends. I like to take my split ring pliers, just go up to the base of that staple, crimp it until it's bent around the hook shank, and then take a crappie bait. And you want that little piece to be like a little hook, and then you just simply insert it into the inside of a crappie bait and force it all the way inside it as far as you can force it. And once it's in there, you just pinch that crappie bait to where that staple digs in. Now you've got a little hook trailer, a little spoon trailer, this is going to make little bait fish swim behind it, picking at it. It's going to give it a little contrast. It's going to stick out. And as that thing falls through the water column, it's going to, it's going to trail behind it. And when it hits the bottom, if you've got any kind of current, it's going to add some action to an otherwise immobile spoon. But it's more, more importantly, it's going to make it stick out. The main reason that I do this more than anything else is I'm throwing it into a school of shad that I want it to stick out. I want it to look similar to a shad. The black really silhouettes well in a school of brilliant shad. The copper uh, does so when it's a lot clearer and the gold does pretty much any time. Black's my favorite. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's my absolute favorite. It has a lot more contrast. It sticks out, but it's a black chrome, so it still has a sheen to it. Put that little trailer on the back of it. You can put a curly tail grub. You can put a fluke junior, cut the nose off of it, make it a little shorter. Uh, you can put twin tail grubs on the back of it. You can do a lot of experimentation, but a screw lock style um, screw lock to put on the back uh, that comes off of any type of frog hook, or you can buy these in a separate package. Uh, Mustad makes a little separate package of them. Um, or you can just use a staple that you take out of a package, or you just staple one with a stapler uh, to folds over put it over the hook shank, slide the plastic up over it. It stays there all day long and it's absolutely freaking deadly. Now, before we finish this video series out, there's two things I wanna tell you. In the winter time, the fish are feeding up, okay? But as the water starts to get colder, scent lasts longer, scent lingers longer, and, I, and the fish have a, a, a better ability to detect both foreign scents and to detect scents that really make them want to eat. So two of my favorite scents is the new my new favorite, uh, one of my new favorites, is the Cox Juice from uh, John Cox. He's a good friend of mine. I put this stuff to the test before I was willing to endorse it, and it's absolutely deadly. And then I like the Smelly Jelly series. Uh, this particular one's the crawfish, but there are a number of different flavors or scents. Uh, this one's a little thicker, and it's easier for immediate application. This one's a little runnier, but it's better for the soaking or the, uh, the marinating type application, but it still works great for putting it on right on the spot. So those are two scents 
that you should definitely put on your baits because your scent is going to show up more your scent is going to be more offensive to the fish and a real scent is going to be something that is more alluring to them uh, because fish can just smell better because cold water is a little denser and it holds scent the scent doesn't dissipate as quickly uh, so it stays near and or on the lure a little better in cooler water and then the last thing i'm going to talk to you about before we shut this video down is this right here and that's a spoon fork knife little combo and you're probably asking yourself why in the hell are you showing me a spoon fork knife combo here's why when you're fishing in the fall pack a lunch pack a dinner pack a breakfast get out there before the sun comes up and be out there until the sun goes down and sometimes even after the sun goes away the days are shorter you can spend the entire day there if you're a deer hunter it's a lot like spending the entire day on the stand because you never know when that big buck's coming through things are unpredictable in the fall your solar things are still deadly accurate but what happens is frontal systems pressure changes are a lot more volatile this time of year so you never know what's going to light those fish up on fire you definitely want to be there so guys i'm chad over at kayak bass and tv when you're fishing in the fall keep all of these things that i've talked about in mind comment in the description box below if you've got any particular questions or some lure or presentation you want me to talk about don't forget to pack a lunch plan on spending the entire day on the water when you're fishing this time of year and it's the it's the best time of year in my opinion to catch that fish of a lifetime do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and don't forget to leave a comment, and I'll see you next time on Kayak Bassin TV.